Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Francis Oliver. Um, I'm an engagement manager with Brain in Hand. Um, and I'm also joined by uh, my wonderful colleague, Joe Desborough, um, who is uh, an engagement specialist with us. Um, so Joe, uh, her primary role is to sort of work with the individuals that are using Brain in Hand uh, to help them think about the areas that they may like to, to use and to support with uh, and identify the, the sort of strategies that, that they think would be really helpful for them. Um, so in our, our session today, um, we're going to give you sort of a, an overview of what the, the Brain in Hand system is. Um, so there's the, the sort of technology side of Brain in Hand, uh, but then there's also the human support side of Brain in Hand that we'll, we'll go into uh, in a bit more detail later on. Um, Joe is going to talk to you about sort of some of the common areas that people use Brain in Hand to support with. Um, and then we'll have a, a sort of in-depth run through of the, the tech at the end. Um, I'll try and keep an eye on the, the questions as they come in um, and answer them when I see them. But uh, if I miss them, uh, we will have time at the end to go back through them. So yeah, do please put any questions you'd, you'd like in there. Uh, so what is Brain in Hand? Um, so it's important to say that Brain in Hand is not just a, a mobile application, although that is sort of one of the primary things that people will access during their day to day. Um, it is a hybrid self-management system. Um, so Brain in Hand sort of uniquely combines that simple digital tools with practical human support uh, and frames it around a person's own individual strengths and, and skills to help them work towards greater self-management uh, and independence. It's primarily for neurodivergent individuals or those people who have a, a mental health condition uh, may have differences in uh, executive functioning, uh, in how their memory works, or that are experiencing anxiety. Um, there are other tech apps out there, but what sets Brain in Hand apart from them is that human support. Um, so all of our specialists, like Joe, are practitioners in their own right, with backgrounds within uh, education, occupational therapy, uh, mental health nurses, uh, social workers and, and, and a lot more areas really. Um, the specialist support is available for each person for the duration of their time using Brain in Hand. So first introducing them to the system uh, and then working together across the year uh, or the entire uh, sort of span of their course um, to review how Brain in Hand is working and, and update and tailor it uh, accordingly. Um, we'll take a, a collaborative sort of personalized approach to self-management our focus is on giving the person using it the greatest possible degree of control uh, over the support that they access supporting with building resilience and confidence uh, and supporting people to overcome the barriers that may occur day to day uh, in the sort of university environment uh, both sort of transitioning into university throughout the time at university uh, and then we can also support with the transition, say, after university into the workplace, for example. Um, as the slide indicates, Brain in Hand is built around the person, not the other way around. Um, I'm just going to start off with a brief video, uh, giving you an overview of the system, um, and then we'll go into some of the areas that covers in a bit more detail as we, we go through. Brain in Hand can help improve your confidence, manage anxiety, plan or work towards something specific. It's with you every step of the way, helping you achieve your goals. This video will briefly show you around the app, giving you a taste of what you can do with Brain in Hand. The traffic lights help you keep track of your mood or anxiety levels. Traffic light notifications can remind you to check in with yourself throughout the day. By pressing the red traffic light, you can let a responder know that you'd like support to get through a challenging situation. They'll get in touch quickly by phone, text or email and help get your day back on track. The traffic light responders listen to you as you talk through your situation, reminding you of your existing strategies and support you to think of new solutions. If you think you no longer need the responder's support, simply press cancel. The diary helps you stay organised 
prepared and confident for upcoming events. The diary will probably be familiar to you if you've used digital calendars before. The difference here is that you can add strategies that are tailored to help with each event. You can add to your diary from your website. Life doesn't always go to plan, and that's why we created the unplanned area. To be prepared for events and situations that don't happen at a set time. For example, when you're feeling overwhelmed or plans get changed at the last minute. We've created a series of solution packs that can help you get through a challenging situation and plan ahead. Each solution and traffic light press is recorded on your timeline to help you reflect at a later date. You can work with one of your specialists to help get the most out of your brain in hand. Your specialist will be with you throughout your brain in hand journey. Your first sessions will explore what's important to you, where you face obstacles, and will help you develop strategies to overcome challenges. For more information on FAQs, please log on to the website. Uh, so that has given you uh, a, a quick look at the, the sort of technology. Um, we will have a look at the, the tech side of things in a bit more detail uh, towards the end of the, the session. Um, but for the moment, we're just going to go into a bit more depth on the, the sort of human support that accompanies that. Um, so the first side of the human support with Brain in Hand is the support from our, our specialists. Um, they will work in collaboration with service users uh, to first introduce them to the system and how those function, uh, those features uh, work. And then they'll also help that person tailor the account uh, to, to their needs. Um, so we have a, an example of one of our, our specialists on the right hand side here, uh, Alison. Um, she has 10 years of experience working with people uh, experiencing mental health difficulties, with learning difficulties and, and complex needs. Um, if we look at the, the journey here, um, so the specialist that works with somebody using Brain in Hand will be with them for the entirety of their, their sort of lifespan of Brain in Hand. Um, on average, it probably equates to around eight to 10 hours of specialist support uh, for each person. But if somebody would like more than that, uh, it is unlimited while you're using Brain in Hand. You can meet with your specialist as much as you like to, to sort of go into those areas. Um, so if we break that support down, um, the first stage that we have there is, is journey planning. Um, in that stage, the specialist would explain the Brain in Hand system, uh, how those features work and how it could be useful to that. Um, in that uh, sort of process, um, they would introduce a handbook that we use, which has a number of exercises to think around the strengths and skills that somebody already has, uh, what they would like to develop. Uh, any goals that they would like to set for themselves uh, using Brain in Hand, um, and also thinking about the areas that they may experience difficulty uh, and what would be helpful for them to, to manage that difficulty should it arise in their day to day. Um, the next stage is personalizing that, and taking those aims that they've identified um, and coming up with those steps uh, that could help that person make positive changes. We then move into the, the sort of solution focused side of things, which is working with that person to break those tasks uh, or challenges down into manageable chunks uh, and build a structure into Brain in Hand that can help support with that. Um, we then move into the sort of strategy side of things, which is identifying the solutions and practical strategies that could help manage those challenges. Um, building those into uh, the Brain and Hand system itself uh, and populating that account to, to support that person. Um, we then move into the sort of reinforcement stage. And so during the sessions with a specialist, they'd be constantly reflecting uh, on how things are working, uh, looking at what is being used within the system from that information collected on the timeline, uh, checking in on achievements that that person has made, and reviewing and establishing whether there have been any new challenges that have arisen that that person might want to use Brain in Hand to support with. 
the other side of the human support that comes with brain in hand is the the response service um, so this is connected to the traffic light system that's built into the the mobile application um, the traffic light system has a, a number of different functions um, it can be used to record how things are going for that person uh, and can be uh, changed depending on what that person would like to record. So it could be, say, a mood monitor, uh, an energy tracker, uh, an anxiety monitor, uh, whatever would be most meaningful for that person using it. People can press uh, a green, an amber or a red traffic light to indicate how they're feeling at that time. Um, and then can reflect on those presses and leave themselves more information alongside them uh, to review um, and sort of help become a, a bit more aware of those trigger points of anxiety um, and when they might be likely to, to arise. That traffic light system can then also be used to request support from the response service. And so if somebody were to press a red traffic light uh, or three amber traffic lights in a row, that would send a notification to the response service and the responder would then get back in touch with that person via their preferred contact method uh, within a maximum of 30 minutes. Uh, typically, we do find that it is a lot faster than that, usually within the first sort of five or 10 minutes on pressing that traffic light. Um, and I've even been in sessions where we've done a, a sort of test press of that response service and somebody's got back to them within a couple of minutes. Um, it is important to note that the response service is not a crisis service or a replacement for, say, a call to emergency services. Instead, it's uh, more sort of about supporting that person to get their day back on track. Um, the responder at the time when they're contacting somebody will have temporary access to their brain and hand account, can direct them to coping strategies, can provide a sort of reassuring or supportive voice to, to bounce ideas off of, uh, or just be an ear if that person needs to vent about a situation that's, that's arisen, for example. Um, so this is quite an integral part of brain in hand. Uh, and the reassurance that that provides, knowing that somebody's always on hand, can really help with uh, somebody being more confident if they want to uh, try something new or something that they've not done for a while, um, and know that their support is, is on hand there. Um, so for our DSA-funded students, uh, unfortunately, the response service is not something that's funded by student finance. So Brain in Hand will fund it uh, ourselves uh, for at least the first 120 days of somebody's usage of Brain in Hand. Um, at that 120 day point, we won't just cut it off. We will get in touch with everybody uh, to see what they would like to do going forwards. Um, if somebody is using the response service and they're benefiting from having that connection, we will extend that connection for up to the first full uh, academic year. Um, and there are a number of other options that somebody could have uh, as well. Um, somebody could nominate a personal responder um, to receive their uh, alerts. That could be uh, a friend, family member, uh, other professional or personal supporter. Um, or somebody could turn off the response service side of things uh, and just use those traffic lights for their own monitoring purposes. Um, the response service that, that we provide is 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, so somebody can press that, that traffic light at any time of day, any time of year, and know that that response is on hand. Um, we have also worked with some uh, universities who've created their own response service um, for students in, say, their, their second or third years. Um, so notably, De Montfort University uh, created their own response service. Um, and in creating their own, they were able to sort of control how that worked with their students. Um, and instead of using it as a, an in-the-moment support, they would use somebody pressing a red as an indication that that person would like to book a face-to-face -face meeting with a member of their support staff. Uh, and on receiving that press, they would get in touch with them to arrange that within 48 hours. 
Um, you would probably be surprised at that 120 day point, uh, how many people do uh, elect um, the response service side of things off. Uh, many people use it to support with that transition into university. And then within that 120 days or after the first year, they don't feel the need for that response service uh, as they did at the beginning. Um, so we're going to hand over to Joe now. Um, and Joe's going to tell you a bit about sort of the areas that Brain and Hand can support with. Um, and then I'll come back and, and talk to you a bit more at the, the end. Thanks, Francis. I'm going to apologise from the beginning because I keep coughing. Um, it's not just an excuse to have slurps of um, my cup of tea. Uh, so, um, as Francis said at the beginning, I'm a specialist coach with Brain in Hand. I've been with Brain in Hand for a couple of years now, um, but I've also been an autism and ADHD coach uh, for uh, four years now in total. Um, I'm autistic myself. I first heard about Brain in Hand after my um, assessment, and actually it's one of the things that was recommended to me. So I, th I think sometimes it can be helpful um, to, to let people know that, so that I, I've, I've got experience of Brain in Hand, not just from the inside, but from, from the outside too. Um, and I think I would really like to encourage you all to think of brain in hand as if you could be your best of best friends to yourself, who looks out for you, who can guide you through situations, not tell you what to do in a way that's not relevant to you because they're not your words. It's not somebody who doesn't understand. It's built by you with our support. Um, so there's no, nobody sort of taking over and determining, um, I think you should do this or I think you should do that. Um, it's very much you're in control of it. So how you want to build it and the information that you want in there is entirely up to you. That way it's really meaningful for you. Um, and it's got things that you can relate to and that you'll find useful. It's not a bank of stuff um, that whoever person average is, it's it's yours. Um, and I th the other crucial thing to think about with Brain in Hand is it's not condition specific. So lots of people um, uh, who are autistic use it, their um, other um, neurodivergent um, experiences, um, anxiety, um, acquired brain injury. There's so many different ways that brain in hand can be helpful. And whilst we're sort of thinking a little bit about studying in uni, we're not just that one person um, at university. Uh, we we are we need to eat we need to wash we need to manage a social life um, or not um, and so it looks at you as a whole so for anybody who's got brain in hand even though it might be funded uh, for example for supporting at university there's so much more to it than that because we 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 are the sum of all of those areas aren't we we can't just be like oh my my university life is sorted but the rest I'm really struggling with everything all impacts the other part um and so the conversations that you would have um with a coach such as myself would be what's really important to you what are your experiences what do you want to feel more comfortably or to be able to do more comfortably? What are your hopes? Where, you know, if all the things that feel uncomfortable now were to disappear tomorrow, what would that look like? How can we together explore your strategies for successfully getting you there? Um, and that's very much in partnership. Um, I also think of um, for anybody out there who's comfortable with analogies, I think of um, if you're riding a bike, it's a good idea to, to wear a crash hat. And that's not because you might not be very good at riding a bike. It's because actually other people are doing life out there as well. 
And sometimes other people's decisions can impact us. That doesn't make it our fault. And so having brain in hand is something that is that equips us in a way for how we, we can be impacted by other people, not just where we want to get to, but how we experience that. So looking at these different areas of life here, um, Francis referred to the handbook um, and using that as an opportunity to explore what's really important to people, where people want to um, achieve. There might be some bits where you go, well, do you know what? For example, I'm, I'm not traveling independently. I'm not, I'm not very good at public transport. I don't enjoy the process, but I have no need for it. So although it's not great for me, it's not a priority right now. That's all really good information too, because we can start pulling out themes as to why it might not be a comfortable situation but that doesn't mean that we're going to go oh but we need to we need to support you with this um so if we kind of think about things like um traveling uh no let's think of things like better coping with anxiety you might have a bit of a conversation with a coach that says okay so what does it look like for you now? What is it about coping with anxiety? And somebody might say, well, I really want to go out and do things. There are these groups that I want to join, but I can't because my anxiety really holds me back. It's like, OK, so that anxiety really holds you back. Um, what is it? So we've got the what anxiety holds you back. So what is it about going to that group that might make you feel anxious? And we might then explore things like, well, I don't know what to say to somebody or I just feel really awkward or they seem to have it all really together and they're really chatty or I don't like being around all of that noise um, or I might not know the environment and be like, OK, so. We know that anxiety is not great for you and um, the way you experience it can really prevent you from being able to go and join the groups that you want to join. We know why, a bit about the noise and maybe it's the unfamiliar places. So what now, what can we do about that together? What would make that different? Well, it might be helpful for me to sort of um, meet one person first to go with them. Okay, let's explore how we can find ways together to make that happen or it would be great if I could actually have a look around the area first maybe okay let's explore for ways that we can make that happen so it's not just um, um sort of looking at these it's it's looking at what your experience is what is it that might be a barrier getting in the way and what strategies together can we identify to be able to explore and work on. Um, there was a great question earlier about cooking. Um, hands up, I'm spectacularly rubbish at cooking. Um, I don't really enjoy the process and I kind of get a little bit instruction blind with it. Um, it could be that in the video, you saw um, reference to an unplanned section. Um, that unplanned section could also be a great diary or collection library of how to's. So it's not just necessarily events that are going to happen that we just don't know when. It can also be a brilliant resource guide to cooking. So, for example, you might have this is my favorite dish. This is the recipe. This is how to do it. Um, this is what to do if the cooker's not working. This is what to do if I haven't got this ingredient. Or this is what to do if I was thinking of cooking, but I've had a power cut. Step-by-step um, -step instructions as well about not just put the oven on, cook for this. It's just like, remember to set a timer so that you can tick off that you've set that timer. And then you'll be able to sort of like, okay, timer set, that's done so that you've got all the steps that are really helpful 
to to you as an individual that's relevant to you as an individual. Um, managing daily routines. I've had great conversations with people who, for example, would say, I just, I just can't, I just don't, I want to shower, but there's no point. And I struggle to have the motivation to shower. And by being able to have those conversations and explore those conversations together, we discovered that actually it wasn't about the shower. Unexpectedly for both of us, there was actually a problem with the bed sheets. There was th this individual um, was to say, well, there's no point in me having a shower because I haven't changed my bed sheets for three weeks. OK, so what is it about the bed sheets? And so by being able to go, so what is it about that? And let's think about that. That's why there's, again, just to kind of reflect on, those are all things that are unique to every individual that, um, that is using it. Um, the issue about bed sheets linking to a showers is not gonna be everybody's thing, but that's where this is just like the best opportunity for you to um, have conversations with people who, who really want to hear what stuff's like for you to, so that you can find meaningful strategies and put them in. Thinking as well briefly of, um, we're, we're, all, we're all quite smart cookies, you know? We've, we, we are wired to think in a way that is unique to us for a reason. Um, but sometimes if you're unwell, and this can happen for anybody of any neurotype. If you're unwell, you're really tired, you've been awake through the night. Sometimes just thinking through the basics of doing something it just goes, just goes. I mean, I think I've had times where I've, I might have put a cup of tea in the fridge right, and then been walking around with my milk carton and just like, what has happened there? actually to be able to go to brain in hand and go, I've already thought this through. I don't need to think about this, uh, think this through today because I've already done it. It's already here. Another example of being kind of your best friend to yourself to be able to get you closer to those hopes and closer to what it is that you want to achieve. Living independently means so many different things for different people. What does it mean to you as an individual? Um, does that mean living um, with other people, but being able to kind of be, be independent in activity? Um, does it mean having your own independence with finances? But finances can be a little bit like tricky. It's hard to stay within your budget. Um, are you, if you're studying or if you're at work, how do you manage those daily tasks? Um, without burning out as well, because diff again, different things affect us differently. So it might be one of those things where we say, um, and with using those traffic lights to say, do you know what? I've discovered that at 6 p.m. every day I'm pressing amber. I must be really tired at 6 p.m. Maybe that's not the best time to sit and try and do a bit of work or to really have to engage my brain. Maybe that's the time where I need to do something that is energy neutral um, and being able to use brain in hand and explore those themes. It might be a case of, do you know, I can do that task, but I'm much better at doing it at 10 in the morning when I'm more awake. So I'm going to just shift when I do it. Amazingly helpful. So being able to sort of the cycle that Francis was referring to earlier, exploring together what, what are those hopes? What is it about them? What are those changes that and, and themes and strategies that you can use? What have you found that's really helpful? And if there's something's not been helpful, that's okay too, because that's more information of, okay, we've tried that, that didn't help. This seemed to help with this, think over here what if we try some of that to to this as well um and kind of building up that theme of going now I'm going to try it that did work now I'm going to see if I can like move on to another thing because I feel more comfortable with this and I feel more confident with this um some people like to use brain in hand briefly because 
they get into this kind of uh, different way of thinking things through. Some people like to use brain in hand for a few years because actually achieving one hope can help with the confidence to then move on to the next hope. Um, being able to build up that confidence in saying, I've got my crash helmet on, I because I've got this other stuff going on in the world, but I can still get myself to this hope. And now I've achieved that, I want, I've got the confidence to move on to the next. Um, so I, I hope that that gives some kind of insight as to the flexibility of brain and hand. This is never going to be a complete circle of information around here. Um, because life life is everywhere i'm thinking as well other things popping into my mind um time management um uh working with people um with adhd and helping them uh find a way to be able to get used to their medications and um be able to record things so that they've got more information there's there's so many ways that I could just keep talking at you for such a long time. I'm going to spare you from that. Uh, but it's kind of pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And don't don't think that if you if it's something that could be helpful. I, I would just encourage you that we want to know your way. We want to know what's important to you. And we want to hear um, how you would like to achieve those hopes. And that's what Brain in Hand is about. You taking ownership of it and um, somebody being able to support you properly and, and just, yeah, go with you on that. Back to Francis. Great. Thank you, Joe. Really uh, in indicative of the, the individualised nature of Brain in Hand. And, and just to uh, pick up a bit on one of the things Joe mentioned there around that for, for some people, brain and hand is a, a short term uh, support that they use uh, in a, a transition. Um, others use it more long term. Um, we've focused quite a lot on the, the sort of higher education side for, for this. Um, brain and hand is also fundable through a, a number of other streams. Um, so it's fundable uh, through access to work for people that leave university and go on into the workplace. It's fundable by a number of local authorities um, and for, for sort of people uh, school aged and sort of college aged, it's fundable, uh, fundable through education, health and care plans. Um, we will support with the, the sort of transition between those fundings as well. So if somebody is, is using Brain in Hand at university and they, they go into the workplace and apply for uh, access to work funding, we'll keep that license uh, open sort of while the transition to that other funding model is, is complete. So there won't be a sort of period between those where you would lose Brain in Hand. We'll, we'll work with you to sort of so that you have access while you, you want it. Um, to go back to the sort of SA uh, student finance higher education side of things um, and to, to sort of consolidate some of this, uh, the areas that Brain and Hand can support with, um, we've recently finished a, uh, an evaluation into to how people are using it and the impact that that's had uh, for our university students. Um, we contacted sort of everybody that was using Brain in Hand, uh, and we had 233 students get back to us. Um, and through a combination of, of surveys and interviews, we sort of identified these four areas as the, the most common areas where Brain in Hand has the, the most impact. And so students felt that they were able to do more with their time not only sort of university academic side of things but also in the, the extracurricular side of things so taking part in in new things uh, that previously maybe would have been overwhelming to try and squeeze in uh, or that they may have experienced a certain level of anxiety in trying 
um, in sort of being able to, to manage that anxiety and manage their time more uh, efficiently. They were able to do those new things uh, without experiencing the, the same overwhelm that they may have done before. Um, students also often spoke about being able to remember things um, and we're not just talking about sort of remembering uh, when they have lectures or, or what to pack in their, their bag for the morning. It was remembering things in terms of the, the self-management strategies that, that can help them if certain things arose. Um, because they've taken the time to plan those out and map them within Brain in Hand, uh, they weren't sort of swirling around in their head as much and they knew that they had access to them. So they were able to free some space up in their mind uh, to, to think about the things that they needed to, to remember as they needed them. Um, they also spoke frequently about the traffic lights, um, both for, for sort of managing anxiety uh, and being able to recognize how they were feeling in, in the moment. Um, being able to, to reflect on, on those feelings at a, a later date, either independently with their specialist or with, with other support, um, identify triggers and sort of plan for those triggers arising again. Um, and also having that safety net of the response service uh, really helps people uh, sort of increase their, their confidence and uh, manage their anxiety there as well. Um, so I've got a few uh, stats on the screen. I won't bore you with sort of reading through all of them, um, but just some, some areas there, we did find the sort of majority of people that, that responded uh, found that they felt more confident in their day-to-day, -day, that they had an improved quality of life, were, were able to overcome the challenges that they experienced uh, at university, and participate more in sort of wider university life. Um, and sort of over 80% of people that used Brain in Hand would recommend it to, to other students. Um, so I'm gonna move away from uh, slides um, and have a look at the, the sort of technology itself. Um, so you saw in the, the video, the, the mobile application um, that we have here on the, the left-hand side of the screen. Um, another part of the Brain in Hand system is the, uh, the website. Um, so the website acts as sort of the, the control center for the system and is where you would create and edit the events that, that you would like support with uh, and can populate those events with those challenges and, and strategies as you see fit. Um, so on that homepage of the website here we've just got some quick links to some of those main pages that we'll have a look at um, we've also got some introductory content uh, and some sort of tutorial videos and faqs there um, so if say somebody wanted to get started before their first meeting with their specialist uh, or wanted to uh, have a look uh, between meetings they can go into some of these and we have sort of video and guide content there to, to support with getting started. Um, so this uh, is a, a sort of pre-populated demo account. Typically, anybody that uses Brain in Hand would start with a blank slate. So it would only contain the, the events and content that was meaningful for them. Um, Mine and, and Joe's team, we will also work with universities to come up with sort of pre-populated content uh, that would be really helpful for students when they get started. Um, and I'll show you some of that a little bit later on. Um, so for creating content and planning for, for things that might arise, we have two main pages there. We have the diary uh, and we have the unplanned page. Um, the diary would be for any of those sort of scheduled or timetable things that somebody has on, um, both things that are sort of scheduled around you, such as lectures and, and seminars, um, but more those things that, that you would like to do more frequently um, or more routinely. Uh, developing a, a morning routine is something that we see people using Brain in Hand for a lot, uh, but also things around sort of planning what to do in free time, or attending extracurricular activities and, and events. 
Um, I can easily create a new event in my diary there just by clicking on the calendar at the time I would like it to be. Um, I can then choose how long I would like that event to last, uh, how often I would like that event to appear in my calendar, uh, and whether I'd like to be notified uh, either at the time of that event uh, or an interval beforehand to give me some time to prepare. Um, I can create my own title, I can include emojis, and I can colour code those events as I see fit. Uh, once I've created an event, I can go into it in more detail, uh, and I can break that event down into the different steps or activities that might arise in completing that event. Um, and I can also identify those, uh, what we call problems within the system, um, and within each problem, I can add the solutions or strategies that, that can support me in that. Um, we do, the, the term problem is probably a little bit limiting. It doesn't necessarily need to be that a, a problem has arisen. It could be the title of a checklist, a series of steps for an event, um, whatever would sort of make sense for, for you as something that you would like to, to include in that. Um, we'll look at that breakdown in a bit more detail uh, when we look at the app side of things. Uh, any event that I've created, I can easily reschedule as plans change just by dragging and dropping that uh, around. Um, and if I've created an event uh, and then a sort of similar event is arising, I can duplicate that event uh, and then just change the sort of necessary details as I see fit. Um, we've also got the unplanned page then. Uh, so that unplanned page would be for those things that could arise for somebody at, at any time or, or aren't necessarily bound to a specific time. Um, we commonly see and hear things around uh, managing anxiety, uh, identifying sort of feelings and emotions um, or potentially sort of independent living skills, things like the weekly shop, um, anything that yeah, isn't uh, a timetableable event. These break down in, in much the same way. I can go into those, add any activities that might arise uh, or identify any uh, problems. Um, so this is a, a good example of when a, a problem wouldn't be a problem. This is that Day has been a good day um, and it's what I would want to do if I've had a good day. So in this case, making a note of the things that I enjoyed or identifying what it was that has made today uh, a good day for me. Um, there are a couple of other pages here. Um, we have a library within the system. Uh, so any activities that you create within an event will be saved in your activity library and they can then be included in any other events where they might be uh, relevant. So the more you enter into the system and the more you start using it, uh, the more it will remember and sort of speed up that creation of future events. Um, we've also got the timeline that will record uh, your interactions with the mobile application, um, but we'll have a look at that in a moment once we've pressed on some, some things within the app there. Um, so if we take a look at the mobile application on the left hand side, um, the first thing that I'm, I'm greeted on the, the app here is a home page. Um, it will show me my uh, current mood at the top there, and that will update as I press the traffic lights. We have uh, what we call the, the now and next section, which shows you the event uh, that you have on and the next event that you have uh, within your thing. I've just uh, updated it there. So it's showing me my next event uh, is not until later tonight. Um, we also have a section for most used unplanned events. So those ones that I interact with most frequently will appear on my home page there uh, and just give me quicker access to them uh, if I need it. Um, and then we also have a section here of solution packs. Um, and that's some pre-populated content to help somebody get started or come up with some ideas for what to include in their own events 
Um, and as I interact with those, it will remember the ones that I'm using most frequently, and it will put them at the top of that list for, for when I come to check it again later on. Uh, so if I start with our, our diary here, uh, I can see that my diary is just displaying the events that I have on today. So I'm not uh, thinking about things that are coming up later in the week. This is just to focus on what's happening for me uh, now or later on today. Um, I can use this calendar icon there to scroll forwards, uh, prepare for events that I have coming up later in the week. Uh, or I could scroll backwards and reflect on some of the events that I've already done which solutions worked for me there and, and maybe what I might need to change if that arises for me again in the, the future. Um, if I go into our morning routine event there, I can see the activities that I've created as the, the steps and the problems that, that I've identified with uh, that event as a whole. Um, if I go into our getting into to uni one there, I've been able to break that activity down into the, the sort of specific problems within it. Uh, and in each of those problems, say uh, running late for my train, I then have the list of solutions that I know can help me in that moment. Um, so here we have a, a sort of mixture of proactive and reactive solutions. So some things that I can do in that moment to manage how that's making me feel um, or progress with my day. Uh, and then also some things around, say, in this example, telling the appropriate person that I'm, I'm running late. Um, we have got some green text in these solutions, um, and that just means that I've added a hyperlink to it. Um, and I can add hyperlinks to any web page, any phone number, email address, other app on my phone, uh, basically any resource that would be helpful for me in that moment. Um, and if I click on one of those, say, uh, book a taxi to take me to the station, uh, that number comes up there ready for me to use, saves me having to search online or, or go through my contacts in that potentially stressful or, or time sensitive situation. Um, we can also see as I interact with those uh, that it will tick them off for me on that page. Um, and that sort of uh, enhances how I might be able to use these solutions. So if I'm using it as, say, a checklist of things that I want to pack or the steps that I want to complete within an event, I can tick those off as I do them and see that record there. Um, or if it's, say, an event around managing uh, anxiety, I can see how many times today I've used a solution. Um, that might indicate that maybe that solution is not working as well for me today as I would like it to. Maybe it's time to try my other solutions, or maybe that solution needs updating for use in the, the future. Uh, I'll just go back to the, the diary page there. Um, I can also see uh, some little clipboard icons next to some of my events here. Um, that shows that I've set a reminder for that event, so I will get a notification uh, at the time or beforehand to prepare, um, but it's also creating that event as a task that I've set for myself. Um, so if I go into uh, Revision Club there, uh, I've been able to break that down as before, but I also have that markers done button there, uh, and I can just tick that event off. Uh, and it will just give me that quick visual cue that I've got round to that for today uh, and what I still have left to, to do later on. So, uh, we can see for our coursework one here, um, because it's got past the time that I set for that task, it's just highlighted that in red to, to indicate that it's not something I've got round to yet. Um, and when I have managed to do that, I can go in and mark it as done and it will tick it off there. Um, if I click across to the unplanned page there, um, where our diary page will change every day, the unplanned page will stay the same. So I'll always have this list available to me. Um, it breaks down in much the same way as our diary. I can click into it to see the activities or, or problems. 
Um, in this case, say I'm having a difficult time, I've been able to break that down into the potential causes of me having a difficult time. Um, and within those, say feeling frustrated here, I have those things that I know can help me uh, manage those feelings of frustration. Um, and as before, as I press on those, it will record them. Uh, I'm just conscious of time, so I may speed up a, a little bit. Um, we've also got this traffic light system built into the mobile application. Um, I can use this at any time to record how things are going for me. Um, and if I would like to, uh, I can ask the app to prompt me at regular intervals throughout the day uh, to record how I'm feeling. So I can choose the period of the day that I would like to keep track over. Uh, and also how frequently within those times uh, I would like to be prompted. That could be as often as every 15 minutes uh, or uh, as infrequently as every six hours, whatever that person would, would like. Um, if I press on one of those buttons, it will give me the option to add a comment there, um, just to give myself some more information when I come to review my timeline about what it was there that say, uh, in this case, meant that I was having a good day, um, or if I press that red or amber traffic light, uh, what has been difficult for me. Um, so all of my interactions with the, the app there are saved on my timeline. So I can view that timeline uh, on my phone. Um, I can see those uh, solutions that I've pressed, um, any tasks that I've completed or any traffic lights that I've pressed. Um, and I can also see that information on the timeline on my website, uh, just a little bit clearer and in more detail than on the, the app. Um, so where I've recorded a solution, it will show me the event or activity that I was in, the problem that I encountered, uh, and the solution that I used to overcome that problem. For my tasks, it will show me the, the task the time that I had set for that task uh, and when I marked that task as complete. Um, and it will also record my traffic lights in a corresponding color. Um, if I scroll down a bit there, uh, if it gets to the end of the day and I have not completed the task I've set for myself, it will just record that task as, as incomplete. Um, I can add comments to any of the items on this timeline to, to leave myself some more information. Um, or if I've pressed that red traffic light, for example, and I've had a conversation with a responder, the responder I spoke to will leave a comment for me summarizing that interaction. Uh, so I haven't got to worry about making a record of that in that, that difficult situation I've encountered. Um, so that timeline can become a really useful review tool. Um, I can see what's been working well for me, what maybe needs updating. I can highlight any patterns in when I'm pressing my red traffic lights and the causes of those. Uh, and I can also see and emphasize those positives that have occurred for me throughout the week. Um, see, I've just got a reminder for my event on the, the left hand side there. Um, and if I press view, uh, it will take me to that event to see those problems and, and solutions that I've added. Uh, right, so that is <laughs> right up to three o'clock. Um, how uh, strict do we need to be with, with time, Julian? Do I have a couple of minutes to show you the pre-populated I, I think stuff? we can be very flexible. And also, if I just a prompt, because um, I know we were talking earlier about being able to create um, yeah you know, sp specific content for institutions yes. people here would be very interested in how that works perfect so that's what i was going to use the the extra couple of minutes for so um yes as as i mentioned we can work with a, a university um to create some pre-populated content um then anybody that uh, registers with us at Brain in Hand and lets us know that they are going to that university, we can apply that content to their account so that they have a, a starting point to, uh, to work off. Um, that could be things relating to accessing 
university services or facilities, uh, information about local uh, amenities, public transport links, um, whatever would be helpful for those students to, to get started. Um, that content would typically appear in the unplanned page. Uh, so if I go onto our phone now, um, at the bottom here, we have a, an event for university resources uh, and an event for university services. Um, so for this demo, it's been set up based on Exeter University, which is the, the university local to me. Um, so if I go into to university services, for example, we've broken that down into student support services and student facilities. Uh, within student support services, we've been able to identify those uh, physical health services, mental health services, disability services, uh, international student services, whatever is, is available as part of that university. Um, I can go into our disability services one here. Um, and in this, I have the contact details for them, uh, as well as a link to uh, a map. Um, and one of the things that I can do with hyperlinks in Brain in Hand is link to a specific location. Um, so in this case, wherever I would be on campus or if I was at home, uh, I could press that link and it would instantly give me directions to the disability services building. Um, if I go back into that one, say go into uh, student facilities, we've broken this down into those different facilities that are available, say around accessing uh, the student union, joining societies, what gyms or sports centres are available. Um, we've got campus maps there, so I could go into that one and I've got links to the maps for the different campuses. Um, for Exeter University, those are interactive maps. So following that link, I can then search for the specific thing that I'm, I'm looking for. Um, we even can have things around, say, printing, uh, links to information, where to go to ask. Um, things around sort of accessing IT support where to go for laundry, the process of, of topping up the, the laundry fob, if that's what uh, the system is at, at that university. Um, really, we can fill this with, with anything that would be helpful for, for students or for, for, say, staff that are using Brain in Hand to have access to when they get started. Um, yes, so I can see, uh, I think we've answered most of the questions that have come in in the in the chat and Joe's just answering one uh, there but if anybody does have any other questions or anything that they would like uh, to, to mention I'm um, happy to, to stay on for those can I just use this as a an opportunity to clarify um, something um, a few things yes. so I will use this opportunity um, but the how in terms of how this is funded through student support services, uh, how do students make it? Is it straight? Is it through uh, to say uh, through the disabled students allowance? Uh, yes, typically uh, university users would be funded through uh, DSA, um, so that would require a needs assessment report that recommends Braid in Hand. Um, the uh, sort of parameters for uh, DSA to fund Brain in Hand is, is not uh, condition specific, rather how that uh, diagnosis manifests for an individual. Um, they don't use the, the best language, um, but student finance will fund Brain in Hand for any person with an impairment to executive functioning, uh, a memory deficit, uh, or a mental health condition. Um, outside of DSA funding, um, universities could choose to fund licenses themselves, say for people that aren't able to access DSA funding, um, so international students could be an example, um, or to say bridge the gap for somebody that's come to university, 
uh, without a needs assessment and is having their assessment done while they're there. Um, I, that's definitely not as common uh, as the DSA funding, um, but is is a is a possibility, yeah. And um, obviously with the calendars, you can actually put any events on there. If I seem to remember from seeing this working previously, you can add sort of like prompters for, uh, to, um, to take your medication. Yeah. Uh, and how does that work? And, and is that a little bit more sort of like, um, is that more sort of like forthright than literally just putting them onto a normal Google calendar? Um, so I suppose for, for that example, the benefit of brain in hand would be that it would not only remind you to take that medication, but you could also break that event down into, say, what medication needs to be taken on particular days. And then being able to check off those solutions as you use them, if, say, uh, I can never remember whether I've taken my, my vitamins in the morning. Um, I could then check back later on and see which ones I ticked off and be like, okay, yes, I did do that today. Um, so it can sort of uh, prompt you and remind you that it, it needs to happen. And then also later in the day, confirm that it did happen. Um, if say you, you might uh, not remember later on. I think another aspect that can be really helpful with the medications is if you put reminders just to check what your stock level is. And you might say, right, if I've got less than uh, 14 tablets in, in the packet or two weeks worth, um, order more. But you can put a hyperlink in so that straight away you've got, oh, I need to take my medication. I'll tick that off as done. And actually, now I've opened the packet. I have got less than two weeks. So I'll just click on this link and I'll be able to order more. So yeah. it can just remind you to just do a little bit more than just to take the medication, but to keep the supply um, topped up as it were as well um, and oh, obviously I don't want to dominate here if anybody else has got any more questions please jump in um, this trouble is not being with my hand fingers strapped up I can't read my own writing um, yes uh, this is quite important one is obviously as it's a mobile app I mean, firstly, and I assume this is this is the case, it's available for both Android and iOS devices, but also what devices is it available for? Um, I mean, uh, what's the, I suppose the, the question would be, what would be the um, oldest device that it would actually work on? Um, because I'm very aware that like, usually as things become upgraded, yeah, so like they're no longer to actually sort of like work with that and those that new Grady content. Yes. Um, so first part, uh, it is available on both uh, iOS and Android. Um, the only devices that we're not available on are any Windows phones. Um, you don't tend to see many of those these days, but they uh, are not particularly fond of third party apps. Um, so that would be the only device where we, we wouldn't be able to uh, be compatible with. Uh, in terms of the sort of minimum requirements for a device, uh, I cannot tell you off the top of my head. I believe for iPhone, it's anything iPhone 6 and beyond. Joe, do you... <laughs> No, I might be wrong, um, but I can follow up with you with uh, a sort of. It's the um, operating platform, so I believe it's iOS 15 and onwards. Sorry, yeah. Oh, that's good. Them. That's good to know. That's <laughs> a major relief. That means my old iPhone SE will, will be compatible. <laughs> I mean, if you're even not sure, uh, go to the App Store. If you can't find it, the App Store will tell you. If you can't find it, it might not be compatible, um, but it would also tell you there if it is compatible with the device that you're, um, you're on. Um, if it's not, check whether you are able to update the software on your device is, is the best way. Um, and just while we're on that topic of uh, 
checking for yourself on the app store. I did have one more slide that I will just uh, get up. Um, if you would like to sort of have a play around with the, the app a little bit yourself, um, you can go to the app store uh, or the, the play store, download Brain in Hand um, and use some login details. I lost the share screen button. Uh, I was on the wrong part. Here we go. Uh, share, not screen one, but screen three. Share that. Um, you can use these login details to access the, the account that I took you through. Um, it unfortunately doesn't have the, the website as part of it, so it will just let you log into the mobile application. Um, but you can have a look around at some different examples in there of, of ways that it could be, be used. Um, yeah, does anybody else have any questions about any, any of the things that we've looked at? I can always find a question. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, bid you farewell as yeah. I have a coaching session to um, go and provide, which is quite cool. I love doing that. It's what I do. So thank you very much for having me and thank you so much, Joe. Uh, I'll be signing off. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, and and um, I think we've come to a natural pause and therefore a natural conclusion in today's meeting. And I'm gonna I'm assuming that there's that like I like I did when I first became aware of this, there's lots of people now who are imagining how this could work for them and and, and you know radically trans transform their lives. Um, and I'm also aware as my final question is that um, this obviously the focus of today's session is how Brain in Hand helps people with education, but it's not just for people in education, is it Francis? No, no, not at all. Um, we have a sort of wide range of, of users in a number of different settings. Um, so we've had projects with uh, schools and colleges as well as universities on the, the education side. Um, we've also had projects with local authorities where we work within uh, sort of health and social care. Um, we've had users uh, who have had acquired brain injuries um, and brain in hand has been used to support the, the sort of rehabilitation uh, into uh, the home or back into the workplace. Um, we have a growing footprint within access to work, so people using Brain in Hand to support them in uh, internships, uh, getting into work, staying in work. Um, yeah, a, a wide range, I think, in terms of, say, uh, ages. I think our youngest user uh, was nine. Um, and the oldest person that we've had using it was in their mid 60s. So there really is no typical brain in hand user. It would be for, for anybody um, where this kind of support would be beneficial. Thank you, Francis. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for turning up for today's session. Um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of your afternoon before the rain st starts to fall. Um, and yeah, uh, you just one final thing is to make you aware that this, this event will be recorded and we will be making it available for people to watch at a later date. So if there's anything during this presentation that you want to review and sort of like it should take in board in more detail, then please go to the uh, the web page that we've created for all events that are associated with Neurodiversity Week, and that is www.wlv.ac.uk forward slash 
neurodiversity. And we'll try and make the recording for this session available as soon as possible. There are also a lo a lots of other recordings as well throughout the series that are available to watch. And also advice guides and useful information and a podcast series as well. So thank you very much for joining us this afternoon and hope to see you all here again at the University of Wolverhampton soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for, for having me and Joe Julian. I do need to uh, to pop off for uh, another meeting as well. But really great to to see you again. Um, and if I can help with anything or give you any resources, do you just let me know? Oh, thank you very much, Francis. That'd be really welcome. That'd be fantastic if you could. I'm just yeah. I'm I'm just literally. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm basically trying to re sure. try to reply to somebody. Sure. sure. Well, Okay, right. I think our work for this afternoon is done. Yeah. Well, as far as this goes, this session goes. Okay, thank you once again. It's really great to see you again, Francis. And yeah, Francis you as well. Too. Thank you for inviting us. Okay, bye. Bye.